Okay, y'all, so we got Courtesy the Beast sitting right with us today. Yo. So, uh, you know, let's get right to it. Yes, sir. You know, I just got finished uh, listening to the new album, Peek and 2. I loved every song, bro. My Appreciate favorite that. was... Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sure, sure. My favorite was uh, Who Is That featuring uh, the Denati? Am I saying that right? Yeah, so that's my... Shout out, shout out to Denati, first of all. Shout out to my man's. Um, he 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 slayed my track. I honestly, I, I had a feeling because I, I knew about him before uh, uh-huh. before the track, and he actually was he fit the track. Like this man was, this man don't sound like any other artist. This man got his like his own unique style, and I was, and I was like, yo, hey. yeah. And I had to. I was like. Nah, I need to put him on my track. Like he needs to play some kind of role in this album. And so yeah, that, that's my man right there. Yeah. Shout out to T Y. Yeah. Like, Puzzle piece, huh? Pretty much, like he pretty much was the he pretty much set the tone for the song. I, I sent them the track and he said it was fired and he slayed that jump. And I'ma always remember that and expect more features from us. So yeah, it's dope. It's dope. And Karma, Karma, Karma Crew, yeah. So that's my uh, that's my Jamaican buddy, man. He he was the he was the last add-on, but he I wanted some kind of artist with an accent to hop on that track, and for some reason I had like five other people who who I tried out. I sent them the track. They sent me back the verses. And I was like, nah, that just that just won't cut it. And it turns out my man's karma, I've been following him for like what, maybe a year now, bro? Like karma maybe a year now. But um yeah, maybe a year now. And I was like, he has the perfect voice. It's, 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 it's gonna fit right in with the track with the the hype of the beat and he just Crash that junk, and of course, you know I had to come for the kill. I understand, I understand. You know what I'm saying? So I put us all on that one track. It's long, but hey, it's it's fire though. The whole track is fire. So yeah, I definitely that was gonna be a single, but I was like, nah, that need to be on the album. So yeah, yeah, that's that's my favorite, y'all. Y'all go listen to that one. Uh, how did that how did that song happen? How did that song happen? Well, first I been like that song without them without ty and karma that song was just supposed to be it was just supposed to be me on the track it was just supposed to be two verses and a hook and that's that's all it was supposed to be but uh i could have slayed it myself but i was like nah let me put somebody on this track you know somebody another artist who is also big and let's 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 smash this track that um who is that was actually a song called Replace Me. That was the original. That was the name of the original song. It was called okay. Replace Me. And I don't know, bro. That that song is old. I'm talking about I made this. I, without them, I made this song like two years ago. Like this job <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, this job just been sitting in my 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 database, whatever you call it. It's just been sitting there for the longest, and then I decided to dust it off and put my peoples on it. And how the song came about, actually, uh, Ty, I was actually about to replace him because he was taking forever for his verse. Like matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> he was taking forever for his verse. As a matter of fact, he actually slayed his verse. What we was waiting, what I was waiting on was he needed to set up his uh, distribution account so he could make royalties off the song every time it gets streamed. And I told him, you need to do that stuff now so when the song blows up in the future, you get paid for it. And I can't release this song with you on there if I ain't, <laughs> you know what I'm if, I, if you ain't got no distribution. <laughs> because, like, if you don't, I'm making all the money, and I don't know what kind of, I don't know if this man know any kind of lawyers, I ain't trying to go through all that, so I just, I just held the track until he decided to get out of, I don't know what state he was in, but he needed to get out of it, 
so he could create this uh, distribution account so he can get paid his royalty. He was prolonging that jump for the longest. <laughs> I said, bro, and I even, what? yeah, I, but I even tagged my man on Instagram because I was DMing this man. This man was not responding to nothing. No emails, no nothing like that. I decided to, you know, go to the nigga way. I had to, bro. I had to go to ghetto. I'm like, I tagged this man on my Instagram, uh, my Instagram, um, my story. I was like, bro, I said, T.Y. Donati, this your last chance or I'm replacing you, right? <laughs> this is last chance. And during that process, this man, seeing my story, still the response. So here I am looking for other artists to replace this man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shit. he was going to get replaced. Like, I was not playing. But I seen, but I, I realized, like, I can't do him like that. Like, I'm not finna uh, do him like that. I just can't do that. Even though I wanted to so bad because this man was taking the very, like, this man was taking prolonging everything. This man was holding back the album. This man was, like, I, that was the last song, the second to last song that needed to be on the track. Every every freaking song was done besides that one. Karma Crew came in with his uh, his verse. Everything was done. Everything. We was waiting on this man, T.Y., but um, somehow he seen my message about how, bro, I'll create this this for you. I'll create this, uh, this, this distribution account for you to set it off. I ain't paying for you the rest of the time. I'm only paying this once. So I paid for this once, and he decided to get right. And now, when the song gets streams, and the song takes off later on, he is now getting paid his royalty. He gotta get that money. Gotta he gotta that get that money. I don't know what was, maybe he was in a drought, or maybe he was, I don't know what it was, but I was like, T.Y., bro, you hurting the whole process right <laughs> now. Progress, bro. It's a whole, bro, you hurting it, but... He finally got right, and um, I'm glad to be a part of his, you know, his growth. And Ty, what made me want to con still consider this man after he prolonged it was this man is dope. This man already slayed the track, even though I can slay the track better. You get what I'm saying? Because it's my album, it's my song. I know how to, I know what the feel is. Yeah, man, you. you get what I'm saying? But. I was like, nah, T-Nighty is a very talented person. I need him on this track. I want him on this track, and I need him. I want him on this track, and that's that's pretty much why he is still on the track now. So, Yeah, I'm glad y'all worked that out. That that track was heat. Thank you. <laughs> um, who, who inspired you to make music, bro? Who inspired me to make music? So, uh, I really have no... Uh, be honest with you, this might sound a little crazy, but I ain't really got nobody who inspired me to make music. It's some music, it's some musicians and artists that I like to hear that I, you know, yeah. grew up listening to. But as far as inspired me to pick up a mic and rock it, or you know, make music, I honestly say, well, I guess I can say, uh, Outkast, Big Boy, Andre, Killer Mike. You know what I'm saying? I guess. Them are the people who inspired me because they were just in there. They was ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. During their era, they wasn't just making music for hip-hop. They was making music for rock, punk, metal, jazz. Like, they was all in different genres. And they pretty much inspired me to not just keep it rap. Like, switch your beats up, switch your flows up, switch your styles up. Yeah, and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were versatile. They wasn't just hit. I would I wouldn't call them rappers. They was to me. They was not rappers. They was, they, they was anything they wanted to be. They was, was like artists. Yeah, they were just artists. They were just like lyricists, and that's why I always tell people I'm not. I'm I'm whatever. I like. Don't put me in no category. I'm a lyricist. You get what I'm saying? No cell. I got you. Don't put, yeah, you get what I'm saying? Don't put me in no box. Don't do that. I'm a lyricist. <laughs> Which means any topic I want to write about, I'm going to write about. So, yeah. Gotcha. Outcast. Outcast. Uh, I guess that's a perfect segue into uh, this next question. How would you describe your kind of music? How would I describe my kind of music? Shoot. Uh, 
That's a really good question. How would I describe my music? Well, first, it's okay. So, every song that I made, well, not mostly every song that I made, especially the ones on all platforms, they all give a message, a good message. But I don't, like, for example, I make a born message catchy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can make a song about be you, bro, but I make it so catchy. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even going, that. you know what I'm saying? You ain't even going, not, you ain't even going to be bored about it. Like, okay, I'm getting a message and it's catchy. Like, uh, let me see. Like, uh, I did a song, it's on Suitable 4 and it's called What You Mean. Minister Stephania, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I get so much feedback about that song that was like, bro, the message, the positive message is there and it's also catchy. So the goal of my music, and it's going to always be this, no matter what I'm talking about, no matter what I'm saying, no matter what kind of song it is, who I collab mm -hmm. with, any song that I'm on or I put myself on or I, that I, uh, I made the song, it's always going to be a positive message, always. It may not sound like it, but that's why I tell people you you ain't you can't just hear me one time and just like oh oh nah you gotta listen to that jump because every line is a positive message. It's a struggle. It's uh whatever what it could be a struggle or 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 whatever motivation all that stuff is in them lyrics, bro. It's in the lyrics. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess I, how I describe my music is inspirational. And catchy, put them together. You got a perfect song, baby. Well, that's what I, that's how I make my music. So hey, hey, we like it. So yeah. All right. Um, a lot of artists haven't even started their career, but obviously you're hungry. But what keeps you going? Uh, what keeps me going? Okay, so. I was like one of those artists who had a whole bunch of, oh, I had a, I, man, listen, I, from the beginning, bro, I had a whole bunch of uh, music wrote, written down in my book, but I never get to record them because I always thought I had to wait on a record label or I had to <laughs> wait on a, on a, uh, a, a, a recording uh, mixing whatever I, I, I told myself all right dang I can never get these songs off my notebook and into an act uh, on a beat I never thought that so I was like one of those artists who got a whole bunch of music but none recorded but what keeps me going is uh, what made pretty much basically what you're saying is what made me want to take this serious mm -hmm. what made me want to take this serious was I knew that I was Pretty much, I knew that I was, I had something. I'm not, I had my own kind of style. I had my own kind of flow, my own, my own kind of image. And I knew that that can change somebody. My different, my messages were different. I knew, like, I had to get these on beats. And I had to get people listening to these. And what keeps me going was the, 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 the love I'm receiving. I mean, it's always going to be hate. You know what I'm saying? But that yeah, motivates course. that motivates me too. That <laughs> motivates me too. Like I love people, I don't know if people like understand this, but I love hearing negative feedback over positive feedback. <laughs> yeah, let me get more of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I need more negative feedback because I learned a long time ago that people that's 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 giving you negative feedback, the one that's hating is the ones that is watching you the most. Those are the ones that stream your music the most. Yes, yeah. Sir. So I, I mean, no, no offense to you know, I love the people who support me. I love y'all to death. But when it comes to my the people who don't, you know, who who say they don't support, <laughs> or who don't listen to me, or they talk junk and negative, those are the ones that's listening to my music. Because think about it this way: How would they even write about? me being trash if they yeah. never want to hurt my music in the first place yeah go ahead let, let them hate let them hate yeah so yeah so if that answers your question so uh, speaking of hate how you how you how you deal with haters i mean how you deal with doubters and uh, others doubting you huh? uh i man 
did a song in my new album, PKC2, and it's called Psalms, I think it's 1325. Uh, uh, no, no, 13.5, my, my mistake. And um, I use doubt as, I said in a song, I use doubt as fuel because if you, want, if you doubted me, you basically, you're not just doubting me. You doubt in my community I built up, you doubt in my image, you doubt in my music, you doubt in my ability, you doubt in my power, you doubt in everything that I built up. You doubt in that. So when you doubt me, <laughs> you pretty much doubt in my whole everything. You doubt in everything. So what I'm about to do is really show out on your behind and show you doubting me is not the right way to do not the right way to go i'm telling y'all now like it's, it's people who doubting me they might not say it you get what i'm saying but yeah. i've been seeing the writing on the wall you ain't gotta say you doubting me but <laughs> based off the things that you say the looks that you give me the 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 the, the, the body languages i know you doubting me I know it. Like I'm just, I'm gonna just play dumb. I'm gonna just smile in your face, like, oh, bro, check this music out. Just sit back and smile. Just sit back and smile. It's, it's, it's family. I don't care who it is. Family members, friends, uh, uh, whatever. Shoot, associates, coworkers. I know the ones who's doubting me. I just don't say nothing because I don't think you're supposed to say anything. You're just supposed to let them see it. And those are gonna be the same ones. And like I remember in my song on the Arabler, it's called Confused. That's my first album. I said, sit back and watch all the doubters turn to supporters. <laughs> they doubt you first, but then they see you start, they see you build a name for yourself, whatever that is, and then they wanna support it. They wanna buy your music. They wanna, hey bro, that that boy fire, you wanna go check him out? That supports. You get what I'm saying? So that's how I deal with it. I deal with it. I take. I, I use it as fuel. That's how I deal with it. So yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's an interesting question. When it comes to relationships, what's what's your stand on that? Uh, single. <laughs> <laughs> single. Um, uh, but it's not that you know. I'm not like. I'm not hurt. I'm not healing. I'm not. Gotcha. Depressed. I'm not. I'm not rushing either. There's none of that stuff. It's just that I, having a girl right now. Not saying that. Not saying that I don't want one. I'm saying that I don't need one. So having a girl right now is not really the best thing for me because once you have like once you get in get in some kind of relationship, you gotta watch over. It ain't you that you looking out for now. It's them Me and. Too them too and you also have to suit their needs too because once you get into a relationship it ain't about you no more so anything you do is will affect the relationship yeah. you get what i'm saying yeah. and that's just not something i want to carry on right now. now now i ain't saying that you know if uh if a girl comes in my life and you know she want to get together that's i mean i'm down with that but when you start saying some junk like you like me and all that stuff, then I'm gonna have to fall back because <laughs> for your sake and for my sake, let's just cut it now because I don't want to get into this relationship and I still doing me. Yeah. Why <laughs> you you gonna be feeling left out, you gonna be feeling lonely or you don't show me enough attention, you don't do this and you don't that, do you love me? And that's just too much to deal with right now. It's too much work. It's just too much work. Like I'm already, I'm trying to build my legacy, and relationships is not, is really the least on my list right now. I'm not saying that you know, relationships are you know. I'm not saying that I hate relationships. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, that's not on my mind right now. We could be cool, we could be cool. But once you start to actually like develop some kind of feelings. Um, doing the come up stage or doing my thing, then I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut it short. Not because I don't like you. Please don't think that it's not because I like you. It's something. It's, I turned a lot of girls down because I'm so focused on what I need to do. Drive, yeah. focus. Yeah. I'm like you're. Don't take it personal, but you're considered a distraction right now because <laughs> if you're not. 
contributing or helping or supporting or doing anything to fund what I'm trying to do, then I just call you a distraction. You fine, yes, you are definitely fine, but oh, you, are. you so is, but my music gonna always be over you, always. I don't care how long we've been together, you mess with my music, you tamper with my music, you try to swim me away, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not finna hit you up, I ain't finna call you, I ain't finna message you. It's over, because <laughs> now you put me in a position where I have to put my music over you. And that's tough. <laughs> that's real tough for her. <laughs> so where I stand in relationships right now, like I said, no hard feelings, you know, I'm just not into relationships right now. I'm just not like I ain't I ain't got time for it really. Hmm. I ain't got time for it. Like if I get into a relationship right now, I tell you, I kid you not, it's going she ain't gonna have none of my attention. She is she might have my attention on days, but when you're in a relationship, y'all share attention <laughs> and <laughs> it, I'm telling them that it ain't gonna work like that. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just be single for a while until <laughs> until otherwise. So yeah, that's my relationship status. That's where I stand on it. I ain't into relationships right now. You to like be chilling for real. Chilling for real, bro. All right. So like, if music could be an aspect that you can touch, what what what, what would it be? Uh, music was uh, if I could touch it, what would it be? What would I use? A pulpit, <laughs> a podium, <laughs> because like. I use, okay, so I use music as, like I said, a pulpit. I always say that. I always say my music is like my pulpit, my beats, my music, my flow, my style, my energy, all that stuff. My that. message is all a pulpit. When you get up on a pulpit, you got a message to tell the people. When, you end up, when you're in front of a pulpit, most likely you got people listening to you. You sharing your story, you sharing your message, you sharing your struggles, you sharing this is how I get my word across. Now, I ain't outside on no physical podium talking to people. Yeah. But <laughs> music is like my pulpit. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Music yeah. is where I vent. Music is where I have a chance to tell what I'm going through, my views, my perspectives, what I'm dealing with, my struggles, my energy. All that stuff is poured out. And the people who listen to my music, my supporters, my listeners, my fans, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, my support system, they are the congregation. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I would say the podium, I would use, I would, if music was an object, I would use a podium. I would make it a podium. So yeah. Dope. Dope. Uh, what are your biggest influence biggest influences in front of and behind the mic? My biggest influences in front of and behind the mic well, behind the mic would be uh, Drake because Drake is has his own style. Drake is not, like I was saying before, Drake is not a rapper. Yeah. Drake <laughs> is not a rapper. Drake is everything. He make, make any kind of song. He make any kind of song. Drake is Drake, Drake I don't think there's not one genre he ain't conquered. Like I, I don't think so. So that's my influence. That's my biggest influence. I think that's my only influence. Other than uh, Lil Wayne, Drake is definitely my biggest influence because he had like he has the the type the type of drive that fuels not just people around him but everybody who listen to him like they all want to be like Drake and what I mean by that is you got people who get their haircuts like Drake yeah. you got people who get their 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 ball fade like Drake <laughs> talking like Drake walking like Drake taking pictures like Drake like Drake <laughs> is is the biggest influence yeah. big right and I ask, and funny thing is I got friends who look like Drake <laughs> <laughs> They look just like Drake. They got the same, they got the same, all of this, all of this. They look just like Drake. And that's what I'm striving to be like. That's like his, Drake has a signature look. You get what I'm saying? He, didn't, he don't switch his looks up all the time. Drake has a signature look. That's why you see all these Drake pictures and these art 
They Shit. always got the Drake everything. That's his look. <laughs> and Drake has so much influence, he actually had people looking like him. That's that's what I'm striving to be. So that's my biggest influence behind the mic. So, uh, oh, I guess that's in front of the mic. So that's in, no, in front of the mic, um, this might seem crazy, but my biggest influence is other than Drake and Lil Wayne, there are no other uh, rappers involved when it comes to this. Mm-hmm. My other influences are not rappers. <laughs> they're not. They're not artists. Miles Monroe is one of my biggest influences. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Tony Evans. Um, uh, uh, what, what's his name, man? What's his name? Denzel Washington, <laughs> Will Smith, uh, Prophetess Diane Bishop Lazar. Um, like those are uh, T D Jakes. Um, shoe. Um, like it's it's numerous of them, bro. But them them just the ones that I could name off the head. Like those are my influences. So what I do is I take how they deliver their messages, I take how they talk, I take how they, yeah. how wise they are, I pound that, put that junk in a, in a song, and people be like, yo, you spoke heavy. All I did <laughs> was, I seen how they craft their, uh, how they craft their, uh, their messages. They messages, their sermons, and what I do is, I take the same practice and I apply it to my whatever wisdom, and I make the song. Yeah. So people be like, Bro, your music is wise. You you so wise. It's because none of my influences are these. They not rappers. <laughs> they not rappers. They are. Oh, and Max John Maxwell. That's another one. John Maxwell. That's an author. A, fa- a very famous author. Becoming a person of influence. Like I. Those are my real influence. Those are my real influences. I'm not like people. Like you see a lot of rappers saying, you know, who influenced you. They always talk about the older rappers in the game yeah. but my influences aren't rappers they are they they authors they preachers they bishops they you know what i'm saying you got some everything yeah so those so yeah those those are the people who influence me the most so yeah speaking of influence you got a lot of fluent you got a lot of influence on other artists just or just people in general how do you how does that affect you Leadership, leadership. Once you have a certain amount of influences, I mean influence, you have a certain amount of people following you, you are in a leadership role. Even if you have just one person that's following you, you in a leadership role, which means you have their ear. I also said that once you, you're in a position of leadership, if you are an artist and you have a lot of people listening to you, so they gonna do what you say because they you listen to them. So, I take that serious. Like, a lot of people follow me, and they listen to my music. They listen to every word. So, they really gon' do what I say. So, I'm very protective over that because music is very spiritual. And all of these artists have a lot of influences, and they talking the wrong things. And they got the... Yeah, and they got a whole bunch of people that follow them, 9 point, 10 point, 11 point billion followers, <laughs> and they have their ears, so anything that comes out that, that stereo, they might apply, they might reenact what is on that song, especially if the song gets them in a mood, any kind of mood. <laughs> Good mood, bad mood, evil mood, terrible mood, ugly mood, whatever. <laughs> Urges mood, yeah. So I decided to... I, I first I realized how like my first of all my influences is growing my influence is growing my fan base is growing my support sure. is growing everybody like people who listen to me now I actually had like a couple of videos of uh, a couple of people who actually listening and like really I had a lady cry over my song do you love me like my songs will affect you <laughs> so what I'm about to do is take my influence and Whoever listens to my music, whoever loves my music, is going to leave with a good message. It might hurt your feelings, it, whatever it can is. I might just be flowing, I might just be spitting just to say I'm spitting, or I might just come up with songs just to be like, I think I'm going to make a song today. But it's always going to be some kind of good message in these lines. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, so I take 
my influence that I created, building up, and gonna have in the future as a leadership role. I may not be dressed up in a suit. I may not, you know, have a cigar in my mouth. I may not be sitting at a big desk, but I have a lot of influence, and if I, I, I control what they listen to. I control, I pretty much control that stuff. Now, you know, um, you listen to my song, like on the speaker or whatever, if I want you to have positive energy, then you gonna get positive energy mm -hmm. if you listen to me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Set an example. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? The best piece of advice that, ever, that I ever got before. Uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, was it, was it, was it, was it, was it? You got to live like, I forgot how to, I forgot how to, uh, how the thing go you gotta live like how others won't live to live how others want you get what I'm trying to say right yeah you yeah. gotta right I, it's I forgot man listen it's a quote that everybody know but I pretty much what it's saying is you gotta do the work that people don't want to do so you can live how people want to live yeah. so I'm putting all the work in now so later on, while everybody trying to figure things out, the work that I put in from the past is taking care of me now. Just sitting back. Just be sitting back. Like for example, um, I'll never forget when, when the Lord told me, this is your plan and season. Forget what everybody else is saying right now. The Lord said, this is your plan and season when it comes to my music. But pretty much, I'm making music now, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to blow up later on of course and when that time happened i'm gonna be chilling over the work that i did in the past years so <laughs> my music is gonna be paying for everything gonna be taking care of me but <clears throat> excuse me the work i'm putting in now i have to do while everybody partying while everybody you know going out to the club while everybody getting the relationships all this other stuff whatever i'm cooped up in my room I'm doing shows I'm doing interviews I'm yeah. connecting with people I'm going to networking events to build up my net my brand all of that stuff is not easy but it's worth it because it's gonna take care of me later on so that's the advice I can't really tell you what the, the actual quote is but pretty much I'm putting all this work in now so why everybody chilling and so I can chill with everybody working later on. So yeah, that's the best advice. We'll, we'll just we'll just find that quote later. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that quote out there. Um, you got a lot of things about like that you say about God. Like, are you religious? I get that so many times, bro. I can't tell you because I talk a lot about God in my music they automatically assume that because I've talked about God in my music, I'm a gospel artist. <laughs> and I'm like, you are being religious right now because if that's the case, if talking about God in your music makes you a Christian artist, that means Jay-Z a Christian artist, that means Lil Wayne a Christian artist, Kevin Gates, Lil Boosie, uh, Drake, shoot, I, the list go, Wiz Khalifa, um, shoot, uh, uh, what's his just name? About just about everybody. You add God in your song, you a gospel artist, huh? Well, if you talk about cars, are you a car artist? <laughs> you talk about women, are you a women artist? You talk about killing, are you a killing artist? No, you're not. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I tell people time and time again, I have a relationship with God. He talks to me, I talk to him. I'm not, don't put me in no gospel category because when you put somebody in a god and you put somebody in a category, that's all you have to rap about. Mm -hmm. Like when you're a, when you're a rap, when you're a, a Christian artist or you're a gospel artist, all you have to talk about is it's God. Not. You get what I'm saying? And that's why I keep telling people I'm not a gospel artist. I rap about whatever I want to rap about. 
God just happened to be that just that living worshiping God that just happens to be my lifestyle. Shit. Worship is lifestyle. That just happened like like worship is how you live, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, praying. It's it's worship. It's your lifestyle. God worshiping God just happens to be my lifestyle. It doesn't make me a God I'm just like a like like I said in my song, I'm not a Christian artist. I'm not a Christian rapper, but a rapper that's a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Love that love. Not necessarily. I ain't. Now I ain't saying that. You know, because I. I because like, Jesus didn't call his people Christians. You could look that in the word. He never called his people Christians. So I kind of hesitate when someone called me a Christian. I. I want to say I'm not a Christ. I'm a saint. I'm not a Christian. But. For, you know, how this world sees us, if I was to go in this, you know, what kind of religion are you? And I tell them, no, I'm not religious, but I do worship God. They're going to put me in a religion thing. <laughs> so you I just... just them, you're not. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they, but lack of knowledge. So they don't know that God has, God and religion is, is not the same. They do not click. It's not, the, it's not the same. Like, before all the religions... It was just, if you look back all the way in the beginning of the word, it was a whole, it was just God, Father, and the Holy, God, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father, and the Holy Spirit, the Son, and Adam. That's all it was. Just talking. It was just a relationship. It was, it didn't have any testimony, no rituals, no religion, no ceremonies, no, none of that. Yeah. It was just man and God relationship, and that's what I am. So I'm doing the work of God. Like for example, I have the gift of exhortation. I have the gift of prophecy, but I'm a, I'm also an evangelist. But I'm not religious. That's gonna confuse a lot of people because they're gonna be like, "Well, what you doing? Like, you, ain't you an evangelist? Ain't you a? Ain't you a? Uh, you have to be religious. Don't no, understand. no. God ain't looking for Christians. God is looking for people who." Is ready to hear what he ready to do what he wants what he needs done. Mm -hmm. God is looking for demonstrators. He's not looking for Christians. He's not looking for Muslims. He's not looking for seven days. He's looking. He's not looking for religious folks. Yeah, right. So we all have our own way of getting the uh, uh, teaching the word. Mine just happen to be music. So I'm not necessarily saying you know I love Jesus Christ. I love God and all of my songs, but God is a spirit. When He's when when God is with you, people will feel it because God is a spirit. So you don't have to say you love God and and rap about God and scream and yell and talk about God in your music. When God is with you, then people will feel it no matter what. So you could like people could say I love God. People could say I you know I worship God, but that doesn't mean anything that's just you just talking god will show up if he is with you and people say that i like you have to be really i'm like yo i'm not religious see and and i usually get mad about that but it's really the lack of knowledge like in the beginning of the word yeah it was just god and adam there was a whole chapter on adam before eve it was just god and adam kicking it Having relationships, talking, revelation, all that stuff. It was just that. And that's what I am. I'm not going by what religion says. I'm not going by what uh what they say about God. I know God for myself. So you it's kinda hard to tell me what who and what God is based on your religion because I talk to him, he talks to me. I know what he sounds like. He talks. I do what he he just he tells me to do something. I do it. That's all it needs to be. That's all it needs to be. He gives me a word, I rap it. You get what I'm saying? And people who, and then, and, and so many times, God would give me songs, uh, not songs, he'll give me words, he'll give me, he opened my eyes up to Revelation, and I write about it in my songs, and people who listen to it, they were like, yo, that was what I needed. <laughs> I needed that. I don't know how you got into that. Like my first album, The Unraveler. So much people connected to that album so fast. It was like, yo, you was you 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 dig you dug right into my situation. It was right on my alley. You was right on my alley. You got your feet. You got your feet in my freaking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. On my floor with your shoes on. You need to take them off. <laughs> but yeah.
So pretty much, that's that's where I stand on that. I'm not religious. I just have an intimate relationship with God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's all that needs to be. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, bringing it back to uh, negative comments and hate, have you received any negative comments? Of course. Uh, shoot, it's people who, who was uh, DM me directly talking about something. I don't think your music is all that good. <laughs> and I, I'm like, wow, people really send it like you like you took time to do that. <laughs> they really think I care. You took time to listen to my music. You took time to find my page. You took time to tap the message button. You took time to write out your thoughtful message and you took time to send it. You must love me a lot. <laughs> you must be a Yes. You must be obsessed with Mariah Carey, son. <laughs> like, you must be that much into me for you to send your hate through a DM. And I posted that junk on my Instagram. I took it off because, like, I put it in my little music review, whatever. But I let people see that junk. I'm like, y'all see this? I'm like, this <laughs> man must really love me. Man, really went through all that work. Really went through all that work. He, think about it. Think about it. He listened to my songs. What I told you in the, what I told you from the beginning. Yeah. I love my haters because those are the ones who in tune with the most. They the ones who ready for me to drop whatever so they can hate on it. So that's how I deal with it. Like I, I love it, bro. I love it. So I have I've had had I I've um I have had people send me DMs about how they didn't like my music. And I just laugh. I'm like, dang, you must <laughs> love me for real. <laughs> To people who love me don't even like they do some junk like that, but that's because they love me, not because they don't like me. You could have just not like the song and went about your day. You could have just yeah, you ain't had like for you to actually have the audacity to tell me you don't like that song, that just shows that you love me. <laughs> so yeah. Um when it comes to making your music, what is what's your process? What's my process? Wait a minute. Okay, all right. Say it again. When it comes to making your music, uh, what's your process? My process? Uh, shoot. <laughs> a lot of people ask me this. Bro, for the most part, uh, all the songs that I've made in the past, YouTube, all the way down to my SoundCloud, I got a whole bunch of heat dead. Most of the times, I didn't write. <laughs> it's just whatever came off the head, like, because, like, sometimes I didn't feel like writing. Sometimes, just, shoot, we had to go somewhere. So, <laughs> I was like, hurry up and credit. Okay, just quit. Yeah, let me just hurry up and credit a song right quick. Um, it was one time when me, uh, me and my people was in the studio one time, and while they was writing, my verse was already done. <laughs> <laughs> I already thought of a whole verse in my head, and it was like, Jamil, you got a verse? So I play the beat. I play it out, lay the beautiful track. It was like, did you just come up with that? I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> so what I do is I play a beat. I turn the mute. I turn. Uh, I turn the lights off, like completely darkness. It's just me sitting in the dark. And I just let the beat. I turn the. the I turn the, the the speakers up. So I can get all kinds of the melodies and the and the bass. I turn all that up, and I just sit back and I just whole time. And if I ain't writing, I'm mumbling freestyles, or my like my my subconscious, my my uh, muscle memory got so good at doing this stuff, I can hold a whole freaking song in my head, and it's gonna stay there until I release it. Now, I ain't good at memory, but when it comes to writing songs in my head, I don't have to write it. Yeah. I'm going to just go to my freaking studio and uh, go to my home studio and just whatever is on my head, whatever I feel. Sometimes it don't just be wrote. Sometimes it just don't be written down in my head. Sometimes I just say whatever's on my mind. So that's really my writing process. I let, like, I, I listen to the beat. I turn the light off. Sometimes I ask God to reveal things unto me so I can 
he can give me revelation, give me some kind of insight, give me spiritual insight. And I would put that into my music. And I would just, I would just let the beat play. And God downloads some kind of revelation about some situation or about somebody's situation. Mm -hmm. And I just put that in the song. And once the song is finished, um, I turn the light on and I record. And it could be times where while I'm recording, in the midst of my song, God can give me another kind of revelation and I have to stop the song, write it down, or mentally write it down, and record it. So, yeah, that's that's really my music process. I sit there, and another thing I do is I visualize how I want my song to go. The storyline, the message behind the song before I even write my first lyric. It's pretty much I plan out a movie in my head. I plan out a movie in my head, and once I plan the movie out, then I start writing what I see. That's all I do. I just start writing what I see. So if I'm visualizing, I don't know, a girl walking down the street, I'm going to detail everything. I'm going to detail what the street look like. I'm going to detail the color of the road. I'm going to detail if it's sunny, if it's raining. I'm going to detail what she got on. I'm going to detail what she walking by. Because I visualized it first. Like I said, it's a whole movie. Then I just write out whatever I hear. Whatever I see. So that's really my process. So, yeah. <laughs> I knew you had to be, be doing something different. Because your music ain't the same as a lot of these other artists. Bruh, like, I think we lost the substance in music. <laughs> substance. Picture painting, like I tell, like in my song, one of my songs, um, I forgot the name of that jump, bro. I think it's uh, I don't know, but oh, iconic freestyle that's on YouTube. I said, you got a paintbrush, I got a paintbrush, you got a pencil. You write your <laughs> lyrics out. I'm painting pictures, and then you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I had a yeah. picture of me taking a picture. I had a picture of me with a paintbrush and a notepad. Like this is. This is, I make a movie. You're supposed to make your movie first. You don't just write anything. Oh, well, that's how I see it. You don't just write anything down. You're supposed to paint a picture first. How you want the song to go based on the beat. How you want this. How you want. How you want your. It's like a. It's like a, a book. Like I reference the word. I reference books. Like the read. The author wants you to make you feel. Want that kind of emotion to come out. It mm -hmm. wants that kind of rage. That that excitement, that love to come out. So that's how I do my music. Like, I, what what kind of emotion do I want you to feel on this song? And yeah. I ride around that, and I let, and I get lost in it. So you can, so your heart can be in it. You ain't listening to your, you ain't listening with your mind. You're listening with your heart. So once your heart get into it, you're going to be like, I love that song. <laughs> Why? Because it connected to your emotions. So yeah, that's my process. Yeah, I think I like your way better. Too. <laughs> um, what's the one message you would give to the people that's watching you? The people that's gonna come in, like come in the future. The message I want to give to my people that's watching me, whether you hating, and just be honest, whether you <laughs> doubting me, whether you a fan, whether you're a supporter, whether you know, like you said, people in the future. Um. The message I want to say to y'all is more is coming. Hey. <laughs> That's all I want to say. That's all I can say. More is coming. More shoot. Just expect more. Courtesy of the Beast is the brand, and that brand is going to it's going to grow exponentially, and I'm gonna make sure of that. That's the message I want to give out. <laughs> That's the message. I can't be any more clearer than that. That's the message I want to give out to all the people that's watching me and the ones who claim they're not watching me. I, I want to give out. And the people in the future, it's the same thing. <laughs> You're going to expect a lot from me. That's all I can say. Y'all hear that, y'all? More is coming. More is coming. All right, now we got one last question. We're going to call this interview a day. Uh... Do you sing in the shower and what what songs do you sing? <laughs> uh no, I don't.
don't sing in the shower. But if I wanted to, if I, if, you know, if I was really getting it in while I was scrubbing myself, I sing uh, to uh, "Never Would Have Made It" by Marvin Sapp. <laughs> I sing, uh, uh, what was that song, bro? I sing Alicia Keys' Girl on Fire. Like, can you imagine me just singing that right now, bro? Like, I sing that, job. <laughs> I sing Bang Bang by uh, Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj, and um, who else on that track? Uh, I think it's Jesse J. I don't think I so. No, nah, it's definitely not her, but that that that's another song that I do. Um, and, and shoot. I can't forget a little Drake. I got to put a little Marvin's Room in there. Got to put a little uh, <laughs> They Know Better. I got to put a little, um, I think it's called Know Yourself. Worst Behavior. So them, them my songs I'll sing in the, in the, uh, in the shower, bro. <laughs> Look, I'll have everybody outside like, bro, hurry up and get out of the shower. Don't take that long. And I'm like, yo, I got to hit these high notes before I get out of the shower. <laughs> I'm going to sing like them. So, yeah. 